It'd be at 5.30. We're going to call the meeting to order. All the room. Uh, select one here, except for Andy, who was home on medical leave. And uh, we'll get started with the first order of business, the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Rebecca, we'll get some Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you. time highway payment records the house bill two payment for maintenance construction and reconstruction of class four and class five highways. The amount of money to be accepted is fifteen thousand one hundred thirty three dollars and six cents. Charlie Mr. Brazil made the motion is out the second is any discussion Seeing none, all in favor please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Not opposed, the motion passes. Second one is, uh, that's the second one. I thought there was two. Fred, is there another one? They gave you both of them. together. Uh, the motion is to accept a, a bridge on, on receipt from unanticipated funds from the state of New Hampshire in the amount of $15,133.06. Is that the same one that it's I just did? It's for $16,584. I thought we did the $16,000. Yeah. 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 Okay. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Oh, so it up. Ms. Hartley makes the motion, and yes, I have a motion. And second by Mr. Brazell. Is there any further discussion about this? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. The motion passes. So vote to lose it. We're good to go. This evening, we're here to give a presentation of the waste to energy plan for the proposed Ashland Power Station. 
And this is an important project for the town. Uh, you, the, the people of the town, voted for us to do this, to do research and come up with some answers. And this is the project that's been being worked on for the past year. And it is important to the town because as this town has a lot of infrastructure that needs repair. There's a lot of things that need to be brought up to speed, up to date. And the only resources this town has at the present moment is taxes. And we don't want to raise taxes. This is a proposal that will raise money, will cost you no money to do it, and you will be able to reap the benefits of it for years to come. The Waste to Energy Committee has been working diligently on this project for the past several months. And they have elected to bring in the Walton Company, and they will be introduced in a moment. I just want to introduce your members of the Waste Energy Plan. Mr. Alan Silly is the chairman. Alan, would you stand? Thank you. Charlie Brazell is a selectman who's on that committee. Craig Moore, our town, Craig. There you go. Harry Gallion. Was, was, was Harry here tonight? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Harry. Uh, Thank you. Walt, William Hess. Mr. Hess. Thank you, Mr. Hess. Mike Marshall. I know. Yes. Here. Yeah. yeah. Mike. He's here. Yep. yep. And Bonnie Bettol. Bonnie, if you might remember doing the Deluda session last year, is a person who's very interested in the environment and she's the environment expert on that committee to make sure that everything we do is not to hurt the environment nationally. With that, I would like to introduce the chairman of the committee, Mr. <coughs> are you ready? Alan, are you ready? Are you? Would you please come down? Jeremy Smith, Waldron Engineering Construction. Uh, joining me is Grant Page. Uh, Waldron's based in Exeter, New Hampshire, and we have offices in New York City. Uh, but our headquarters are right here in New Hampshire. A lot of our members are uh, New Hampshire residents or New Hampshire uh, educated people. And uh, we're a local company, but we do work all across the country. Uh, we design and build facilities for clients such as yourselves, for municipalities, for utilities. Uh, for private developers, for colleges and universities. 
uh, and we as stated we turn those over to you assist you a little bit in the training in the first year of operation uh, but this will be your plant not our plant we're building it on behalf of you and it will be the Ashland power station have your name on it from day one <clears throat> so we are analysts utility engineers uh, we're an EPC contractor that's a real industry term for design build uh, construction managers we do our own commissioning uh, we serve as owners engineers and we do our own control systems uh, a little bit of our leadership uh, Terry Waldron is the CEO uh, lives in uh, Kensington uh, John Sweet is from Maine but we don't hold that against him Jeremy <laughs> Smith uh, Gordon Hudson uh, now lives in Danville New Hampshire and Grant Page out of Wanda Uh, joining us on this project, we have a great civil partner who will help us with both the civil and the wastewater, that's Emanuel Engineering, um, and they are based in Stratum, New Hampshire, about five minutes from our office, about an hour and 17 for you. And I'm going to turn things over to Grant Page. Grant Page is our Vice President of Construction. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Appreciate you having us here tonight. I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about Walgreens experience. Uh, so engineering has been brought up several times uh, tonight already, but it's Waldron Engineering and Construction, and I'm the construction side of the firm, so I run that portion of the company. A um, couple of uh, reasons why you know we like to be involved in things like this is our experience. We've worked all over the country. We've worked overseas personally. I've worked overseas for the company, uh, building plants like this. A uh, good example of a waste energy plant here is the. Laidlaw Berlin biomass plant. Some of you may recognize it as the old Brazier paper in Berlin. Uh, so that plant was decommissioned several years ago and uh, the owner bought the project from a uh, demolition company. And that job required extensive construction and the services which we provided as a company to uh, retrofit that boiler. It's roughly, roughly 70 megawatt size, size turbine on that plant. All new auxiliaries, new building around the boiler, significant rehabilitation of that plant. Um, so that's, that's much bigger than the plant that uh, we're looking at here, but you can see how uh, the plant can lend itself in nicely to the community. Uh, and the soccer fields nearby, and they actually provide a bunch of jobs to the, the local community uh, with operators during construction and things like that. So this is a substation product example. This is more of a example of a uh, microgrid. Uh, back when we built this, we called these plants um, combined heat and power plants. You might hear that. Uh, this is Lion Delta Cell, which is down in Lake Charles, Louisiana. This particular client, they make um, polypropylene pellets. So they manufacture that's kind of like a uh, refining process. They require a tremendous amount of thermal energy. So we were able to retrofit that plant on their energy side with you know, engines and combustion turbines that created heat to satisfy their process needs, but also created power so they could offset their take from the grid. So provided them a great discount in their energy usage, but also provided them resiliency because they can now operate on island mode. They didn't have to be reliant on the grid for their processes. So we have a lot of experience. We did a complete design on this, complete engineering package, procurement and construction management, hired all the local subcontractors to get this to completion, and we're able to commission it, and I believe this one came in on budget and then schedule. So true waste energy project right here in our own backyard. This is the Nashua um, Wastewater Treatment Facility. They have a gas digester that they use here to break down waste. That gas is then used in an engine to create electricity. It's also used in the plant's boilers and there's some uh, heat recovery off the uh, engines themselves. They had a 380 kilowatt engine that failed. So their Walgreen was hired to design a new plant, several stages of design, 30% to 100%. Significant permitting support on this one. Jeremy did a lot of that himself. He was the project manager. And there's significant interconnect to the utility support that Walgreen provided. Um, I actually personally estimated this job when I was working for another self-performed general contractor. And uh, the Walgreen team uh, did an excellent job on this particular project. Uh, two new engines to replace one, so more resiliency. And uh, they're operating that plant successfully today. Uh, Lebanon, up the road here from us. This project is in construction right now. This is a complete um, uh, use of waste gas that is typically flared. So right now, this particular landfill, all the gas that's accumulated in the plant 
get sent to a flare, so it's wasted heat energy. So Walden was contracted to put in five micro turbines. They'll now take that, that flare gas and send it through micro turbines and make power instead. So it's offset the cost of energy to the community and to the landfill itself. This should expect to break ground in the spring and uh, be up and running sometime next summer. All right. Oh, one more, two more quick things. So, um, <laughs> so why Waldron? Uh, so, uh, conceptual estimating. Um, my team's coming off a project right now where we estimated for a very large potato chip manufacturer, which I cannot name, but so we're doing conceptual work for them now, and uh, we got about 25% design, and our team, based on our historical data, based on our relationship with subcontractors, pulled together an estimate for them to move forward, and we were recently awarded the next stage of the design to move forward. So that, uh, talks to our estimating capabilities, and we also have a large northeastern university, northern eastern country. I can't tell you which one it is, but uh, they've hired us to do a 50% design as well, based on the information we pulled together on multiple iterations of cost estimating based on our own historical data and our local subcontractors. So we have that information in house, and we plan on using that to help come up with the cost, of, the opinion cost for this as the project moves forward. So that's all I got. Thank you, everybody. Great. <coughs> Thanks, Grant. Uh, those power plants uh, for the chip manufacturer, that's actually the second one we've done because no one can buy just one power plant from all of them. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, many of you uh, know your town a lot better than me, but I can't help but point out this is your sewage treatment facility, and this is the Collins Street that kind of winds along the back here and then comes back up, coming around to meet your uh, Route 3 um, off ramp and Cedar Lane. Um, this stretch of area right here where you see the cell phone tower and that back. This is after a multiple site research that we've done for you, uh, presented multiple options, working with your excellent waste energy committee. Um, we've come up with this is the most likely site to be a successful project for you. And this is what, and this is what we hope it'll look like. Right here you can see a waste energy uh, this is currently envisioned as a 12 megawatt facility, so not as big as some of those that Grant just talked about, but larger than some, so in the mid-range for a Walford project. Uh, 12 megawatts, we have connection here, uh, truck traffic coming up, and then we have the main structure with the tipping floor, a boiler, waste or emissions treatment, and then a steam turbine generator that will put that power onto the grid. Uh, this would be all new roads here connecting back up um, and all facilities for the administration and operators for the facility. So a little bit about the waste energy cycle. Uh, again, as I said, by the time the truck gets there, where the truck dumps off, we call that the tipping floor because the truck is tipping up and dumping off the municipal solid waste. It goes into the pit. The grapple crane is going to pick it out of the pit. Yes, exactly like that arcade game that took so many of my coins when I was young <laughs> at Hampton Beach, but I'm not regretful at all. I have several uh, useless an uh, stuffed animals that I give to my daughters now. Uh, they will then put it into the charging hopper and feed chute, go into the traveling grade system, and then it is combusted in the boiler. Uh, we're currently in talks with Babcock and Wilcox who has been a boiler manufacturer for much, much longer than even my grandfather was in World War II. Uh, and then coming off the back of all that, we have all of the treatment, uh, spray absorber, a bag house, and selective catalytic reduction. Everything required to meet the stringent requirements NHDES is gonna put on us to operate a municipal solid waste facility. And then it will go to the stack you can imagine for a minute there are actually two chutes and two of these boilers, but just one stack. All coming together and working together to make steam. And steam at that point is just like every other uh, power plant uh, from the, since uh, inception in the 1920s as a good generation source, the steam will turn a steam turbine. That steam turbine will make electricity and that electricity will go to the grid. Uh, and any um, heat from that will then be rejected into the air in a cooling tower. So then, as I said, we've made electricity now and we're at the generator. We're gonna go into some high voltage switch gear. Uh, again, all Ashland Power Station owned. And then we're gonna go to a high yard 
And from that high yard, we're gonna come up through a transformer to an off-take structure, and we're gonna connect right back to those 115 kV lines. This power will then go out to the substation. Some of that energy will come back here, and basically, you'll never pay for energy. Again, the town of Ashland's usage against what the proposed plant that we're gonna make will always be much, the amount of energy you make will be much, much greater. You don't have to pay a small amount to wheel it through um, Eversource's grid, uh, but basically you won't ever pay for your own energy again. In fact, the vast leftovers you have that are gonna go out, other people are gonna pay you for that. And speaking for how you get paid, uh, this is a chart showing the major revenue expenses and capital. The primary funding source for the plant will be the tipping fees. There's also a value to the power. So that's the raw power that we're making on any given day. Again, roughly about 12 megawatts as envisioned, subject to change. Then we have the energy value, but I just said you take, you pay yourself all of the electricity you'll use for the entire year, your entire town, and then you'll sell off the rest. And then you get a capacity payment. As long as we do a good job designing it, which we will, and we do a good job building it, which Grant will, and your electric department does a good job operating it, which Harry will, then you will get capacity payments from the state even if you're not running any electricity at that time. And then we'll have some uh, miscellaneous sales. Um, some of the ash that we make can be used in the concrete process, um, and they love uh, fly ash, uh, especially in those concrete because they get credits for that, as well as some of our um, offtake can be turned into fertilizer. So there are a few minor miscellaneous revenues there. Your big expense, of course, operations and staff, primary expense of any power plant. Also legal insurance, professional fees and assessments, long-term service agreement, that's how we keep the people like Babcock and Wilcox working on your facility to keep it at tip-top shape. And then we will have to pay a landfill. Uh, there's gonna be some bottom ash and some waste scrap that we cannot uh, consume in the plant. And finally, your leftover capital goes to bond repayment, and then your capital improvement fund, which the chairman spoke about earlier. Uh, so our big next steps, uh, the detailed project briefing, uh, we're gonna be scheduling it, working with the town, it'll be sometime in January. Uh, we're gonna submit a warrant article on this plant, uh, hopefully in January of 2024. Your town will then have a deliberative session, just like we do in Danville and Stratum, and then we'll vote on foreign articles. Uh, you're voting this in March of 2024. And uh, that concludes our presentation. I'll turn it back over to the chairman. Thank you very much. Good presentation. So before we get too far into this, I just want to, gonna, I know the first question is really going to be how do we pay for it? This is not going to be on the tax base. There will be bonded. And there's a quirky little thing in the law that allows us to get a bond and we don't have to pay it back. So that plant's operating. So you have to take a dime out of your pocket until it's going. And once it's going, it will pay for itself. And you will have money to, to do capital improvements in town. We can do the things we have to do. The town hall needs to be renovated. We need a new police station. We might have to add on a fire station. And there's all kinds of things that have to be done in town that just isn't any money to do it. And we do not want to raise the taxes. So questions now, get started. Anybody, raise your hand. Yes. Uh, where is all the trash coming from? Excuse me? Where is all the trash coming from? Okay. The trash will be coming from other towns and other cities because they have the same problem we're gonna have when they close that pit up north, they gotta find some place to go with their trash. They're gonna bring it here, they're gonna pay us for it, that's the tipping fees, and that's part of the revenue source. Well, I do have some concerns about that. Um, I mean, the landfill in Declan is gonna be closed, but there is a project to open one in Whitefield. Same. That, what? Yes, uh, the same company, <coughs> but state has granted a, a permission for that landfill in Whitefield is being challenged but in court but sometime soon the Supreme Court will rule 
Now, if <laughs> if that Whitefield landfill is created, is it going to draw trash away from the Ashland area? The truth of the matter is, David, there is a lot of trash. It, is, it costs a lot of money to move it out of town. Uh, we pay, and I'm not sure what we pay every month. How much we pay every month for trash? Too much. Too much, he says. I know it's, it's an absorbent amount of money that we pay every month to take the trash from the dump to that landfill. Some of those gross fees are going to go away. Now, this is a trash energy plant. It's solid waste. You can't burn bumpers and refrigerators and that sort of thing. But we get money for steel and that sort of thing. We're not going to accept that sort of trash from other towns, only for burnable trash. Well, my question is how many towns do you need to provide enough trash? I mean, where are you going to get it all? Have you talked to other towns about That's in process. Jeremy, you want to, want to handle that one? Yeah. Jeremy's working on that right now. Yeah. Uh, thank you. That's an excellent question. Yes, we are engaged in a municipal solid waste survey. Uh, we have a designated um, tonnage that we're trying to achieve um, and we're currently studying all of those towns existing landfills the probability of those landfills um, closing getting extended and new ones coming online uh, we do know that there's 1.2 million tons of trash available and that number increases every year and uh, we are looking for 168,000 tons of trash per year to make the current design work so where is that 1.2 million? Is that the whole state? Yeah, that's the state of New Hampshire, not counting anything uh, from any other state. Uh, but just to, to the south of us, there is a waste energy plant in Pennington. So is that a competitor to this plant? Or? Uh, well, all, all the trash will seek um, a disposal contract. So you'll be able to offer disposal contracts um, your facility will be newer, more efficient, and you'll be a little more aggressive in your disposal contract offerings. Um, but Pentecook has, um, you know, a disposal contract with towns, and those have numbers of years. So that's all something that we will look at um, as we analyze the, the right size. And again, we've, we've talked about a 12 megawatt facility that is completely initial and dependent on the results of the study that's ongoing. Yeah. Well, I'm just wondering. question. We need the customers to make it work. Yep. We have uh, looked at the amount of trash that's available in the area and we think it's feasible and we're doing the detailed survey which will have those results for you in uh, January. Uh, fully detailed reasons. David, as we said in the beginning, this is, this is where we are at this point in time. So we are moving forward but we want to bring you up to speed with where we are and where we're going. And they're working on all these things that you're oh, questioning. That seems to me to be a big question, you know. Right. Where's the trash coming from? And is there enough around? I'll tell them. What one of the additional sources of waste is going to be existing landfills. The the plant, as I understand it, has the ability to take landfills that are existing now, dig them up, bring them and, and burn burn the materials and get rid of the landfills, including the one that we have in town. So there's just a, a lot of opportunity to, to generate the, the volume that we're going to need. Uh, it's not a given, okay? And, and I, David's questions, I, I think, are, are very valid, but the, the Waldron Gang is putting a lot of effort into defining how that process is gonna work. We're optimistic that there's garbage out there to burn. There is trash out there, no question. Yes, sir. I have a question. Identify yourself too, please. What's that? Tell, tell us who you are. My name's Paul Hicks. I live on River Street in Ashland. Thank you, Paul. Uh, it, not so much about the plant, but looking at one of the pictures there, you have tractor trailer trucks that are going into this facility. My concern is, will the access to this facility only be off of 93, or will they be going to the center of town? 
the no, width, the width of where the common man restaurant, you can't get track to trail a truck. No, I don't think we should have painted the, the lines there, to be honest with you. It's going to come off of the highway and go down the route. Strictly 93. Yes. There'll be nobody coming to yes. the center of town with the track. That's the reason why that, that location was chosen. And your, your friend next to you had his hands up? Yes, sir. Yeah, I have two questions. One, could you give us a little more detail on what the bond is going to be for? and what the surety is you're putting up for the bond. I realize you're talking about future monies from the plant, but the bonding company's gonna want money up front. And what those numbers are, and what the numbers are currently for our waste management. Not just a lot, I wanna know a number. Now I've got another question. Well, that's fine. Uh, I know that they're working at the finance and, it, and that's part of it. There's gonna be some, some, some grants from the state should be some federal grants and then it's going to be bonding. Uh, yes. We paid a little over $100,000 right now, but 101000 to get rid of our trash every year, and that continues to rise. And if we have to go out to Iowa, upstate New York, it'll even be a, probably tripled. Um, so that's what drove this whole project forth for us. It, 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 it and makes us, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. go ahead, get it finished. And Jeremy doesn't know how much He's working on those numbers for the bond now, but we expect to have them by the end of the month. So we'll have another round of meetings. This isn't the only one you'll see. We'll have more meetings in January to, to give you guys that information. Yes, and there'll be more information as we move forward. So one great. of the things you want to take into consideration, we own our own electric plant, which puts us in a catbird seat for doing this. Other towns do not. You have a question? No, I'm familiar with electric plant, but what I was after was the estimated cost of the buildings and what we're going to have to bond. I mean, is it $5 million or $20 million or how much are we trying to, what's the cost of the, the Again, estimated cost? that's all in the process and that will be in a further, you know, as we move forward. Well, do you have some idea? <coughs> Anybody? Will this information be available for the, when we do the article? Oh, absolutely. With the town absolutely. here before it goes to the... Yes. Yeah. Before we get to all the, the lunch session, we'll have the answers to all of that. Well, yeah. I mean, we're going to have several other you know, meetings when, where you can come in and see where the progress is. So we're not hiding anything. We want you to know everything that's going on. We're not hiding anything. But it's in progress. We're moving forward. This is something we were asked to do. This is what we're doing. So we don't have numbers yet. Okay. Like we will. Well, yes. we don't have yet. No. So my, second, my, my second question, what, what's going to happen with the pollutants coming out of the stack? How are those going to be treated? Well, uh, Jeremy, this, yeah. this is, I know this is very clean, but we'll talk about it. Sure, so we have uh, three major, um, go back. So we have three major uh, treatments. Uh, we're gonna have a spray dryer and absorber. We're gonna have a bag house and we're gonna have an SCR. Uh, so together, those three types of treatments take care of uh, pollutants in the stream, they take care of acids, they take care of particulate matter, and they take care of uh, pollutant emissions. Um, and they will meet or exceed all of the NHTS stringent standards. There's a whole separate section of the NHTS standards just for MSW plants. So this is extremely well regulated, um, and we're going to meet all of those. Using this is the most advanced current technology, even maybe one step beyond where New Hampshire is right now, but we know that EPA is going to make New Hampshire go, and that's this number right here, selective catalytic reduction. Uh, older plants would have had a non-selective catalytic reduction method. We see that already in place in Florida. We know that it's coming up here to EPA Region 1. We're getting ahead of the curve after discussing it with the Great Waste Energy Committee and saying we're going to go ahead and put the newest, latest, best emission technology, which again does come with a price tag, but that's the latest and best emissions that we can get for MSW, meet and exceed New Hampshire standards. That's where my first question was going. Is that's got to have some costs associated to it. It does. And I get yeah. like a ballpark of what those are. The good, the, the the good part of this is that we'll get rid of the trash. This is the, one of the problems that you have. You have a huge amount of trash, 
and now we have a, we have a problem where it's going to go. The people up north do not want to be kill, filling their mountain valley up with trash for the rest of their lives, and they, it is creating a problem up there. We know that it's going to be have to be trucked out of town at a great expense, and this is a way to solve that problem and develop energy from it. Everything is going to be electric in the future. They're pushing cars to be electric trucks. The electricity is going to be a commodity that everybody's going to need, and we're going to have it. I'm, I'm well aware of electricity. I yeah, I'm sure you do. I would like to put solar panels on my house, but I can't because of the way. Solar panels are going to last 7 to 14 years. This is going to last a lot longer. Oh, uh, yep, yeah, yeah, there's, there's a lady way in the back there would like to ask. Could you come step down here so we can hear you, ma'am? And it, the way it's designed right now, it's not meant to be an island, but can it be converted to the, it such? Is that because the plant as it's currently conceived could work as an island? It, it, I think it can. Could. <laughs> Uh, as it's conceived right now, this is, um, if you go to the, if look to the poster on the back wall, the power's going up and going on to the Eversource 115 right. KV lines. Right. So it's serving um, the entire region. Um, the plan is uh, too large. I, I know where you're going with it, and it's a good thought, but the plan is too large to successfully operate just to power the town of Ashland. So that, that particular thing um, wouldn't work. Sorry? But you did design a plant that could be an island for the town. I, I thought you mentioned that. Jim, I think she's asking if the, if the grid goes down I'm outside of Ashland. Um, your uh, your oh, electric department supervisor's right here. I'll let him answer your question. No, no, no. She wants to know if we can stay running when everybody else has got lights. That's what she wants to say. Not like a black stock. Uh, no, that uh, municipal solid waste is a revenue generating. It is not a resiliency. There's no resiliency. There's no. It's not a backup thing. So it's designed to make you money. Down. Yes. Down. Yes. If the grid goes down, the plant will have to vent its steam. But we're not going to stop taking trash. We're going to have. A, we're going to run, run and blow the steam off, even though we can't make electricity because the, you don't want to miss your tipping fees. Those tipping fees. That's what makes the plant run. And it's a revenue source. If you were just to make it an island, just to power Ashland, we'd have to pay for it out of taxes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, is there any idea what the revenues will be? Oh, it'll be in the mains. Is there any idea? Uh, well, it'll be in the mains. That's all I can tell you. I'm not going to give you a number because I don't have one. <laughs> but I know it's going to be in the mains. So will you be able to get those numbers as well as the construction costs? There will be more information on the financing package as we move forward. First, we have to, they have to do all the engineering and get all of the contracts of people who are going to be bringing us the trash so we know where it's coming from and how much we're going to be able to get. All those things are still going to work in progress. This is, a, this is like a, a, a report card. We're just, we're just bringing this. This is where we are at this point in time. We're moving forward. And you asked us to ask questions, so that's Oh, no, no, that's fine. Like. No, it's fine, and I'm explaining to you we don't have all the answers yet, but we will have all the answers by the time this comes to the conclusion. Thank you. One more question. Uh, yes, uh, Margine Badger. Uh, in the design and engineering process, will you be considering, uh, because of its location, any impact on the Pemichawasa River overlay area the wellhead protection area and the town's aquifer. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, all of those radiuses have been considered. Um, we do have a filing to do, and that will be obviously um, NHDES. Uh, Barbara over there is going to be very careful about those and go through those very carefully, but we have looked at that, um, especially your wellhead um, area, protection area. And that's why we've chosen this particular spot, which is as close to the wastewater treatment as we can get, and as far away from the river and the well. One last question. Yes, ma'am. Kathleen DeWolf. Um, since this is within a quarter of a mile of the Emmy, which is a designated river, it will probably trip uh, regional MPAC, 
from every community along the PEMI corridor from Woodstock to Franklin. And they'll all be able to have probably an uh, ability to comment on this a uh, 12 megawatt plant is is a regional impact yeah um, so that they um, every town that would be impacted will all automatically also have that ability so, uh, so the, the river but also those impacted um, from the route three crossing and from how we're going to do our power distribution yeah. so it's an excellent point but it might even a larger circle than you just noticed yes uh, and by the way I live across the river from the Bridgewater biomass plant, and I get ash. Okay, um, nice my situation. Yard from it. Hired. This, this excellent company, yeah. and they're going to cross all the T's and dot all the I's. And we're going to bring you a power plant that's environmentally safe and will make resources for this town for the future. Well, right now it's still in the process. Yes, it's, it is. It is not. I don't believe it's ready to be bought to warrant yet. Well, Depending we, on what the language is, the warrant is, <clears throat> and the clock is ticking, I believe is two, three weeks before. Ms. Wolf, would you like to lower your taxes and get free electricity? Uh, I, I'm not here to discuss lowering my taxes. Okay. I'm, I'm sure in my point of view that there appears to be still, you've done an excellent presentation. I see the value of the facility. But to put this to warrant in January, I believe there's still a lot of information that the townspeople need to know before it's put on warrant for March voting. You know, you could have six more months and you could then have in May or June a complete PowerPoint with every single I dotted and T crossed, and you might have. A better, well, this was supposed uh, to be a question uh, uh, and answer period, not a speech period, please. I, 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 I'm sorry, this man is listening to me, and since he's going to be hired to do the facility, and as a taxpayer, I want as much information as possible. Absolutely. And that's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. and, and you will get it. Thank you. It will be there. This is a I am directing company. my questions to him, not you, sir. So that's all I'm, that's all. I'll, I'll stop now before somebody yeah, I'm gets. Sorry, it's a select board meeting. So yes, to... but thank you very much for no your problem. presentation, <laughs> and I'm looking forward to a heck of a lot okay. more information before this is brought to the voters. Thank you. Thank you. As you can see, this company has been very successful uh, in. And I just the recognize site. them for that. I just recognize that. Uh, please, you are selected one. If you know what my job is, please. Yes, I do know. Okay, thank you. And so, I was I was open. Would you please allow me to speak? Thank you. Well, you just directed a question to me, and I just responded. So, the question so period, maybe the question period is over. Yep. Because we don't have any more to tell you. We've told you everything that we have up to this point. And I keep stressing the point that this is an information we and this is the information we have at this point, and to show you that we hired very professional people to do this project and have done it very successfully in this state and around the country. And we feel comfortable that they will do a good job. You know, we want you to feel comfortable that they're gonna do a good job as well. And I think we will once we get this information. Thank you very much. And I thank everybody for coming and listening and expressing. You now we know what we have to do. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is Request for full attachment of the Hampshire Electric Software Project. And while they just they telling us they're not in the broadband business, so put that on one one line. Mm. So tell us about this, Fred. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, we received a uh, communication from New Hampshire Electric Broadband uh, asking us to grant them permission to service only Route 175 in town, and maybe sometime in the future, North Ashland Road. No one else. Um, my recommendation to the board is don't do it. Uh, the federal government gave them $50 million. The state government gave them $2 million. 
the county gave them another two and a half million dollars and they uh, we have been uh, talking to them for some months and uh, yeah. they finally came right out and said no we're not going to serve the town of Ashland even though the money was supposed to be for all of Grafton County so uh, their their plans that they sent to us uh, only show those houses on Route 175 in towns uh, that they would serve, no one else. And they had to be within 2,000 or 1,200 feet of the line that was proposed. Other than that, you couldn't get served. Uh, they also proposed sometime in the future, but with no date, uh, that they would serve a portion of uh, North Ashland Road where their power lines used to run, which are now town power lines, uh, but with no date to do that. And again, they, ha they have to be within 1,200 feet of the power line, or the line running down there to, get to, to be attached to the system. Most of the houses up there would not be within that distance. So they would not be able to get broadband in town. You'd have to pay for it privately with the vendor. Um, my personal feeling is that uh, they formed a private corporation uh, they are making money hand over fist using federal dollars and state and, and county dollars and none of that money is being returned to the taxpayers who funded for it. Uh, I don't think you should give them more money uh, unless they're going to pay us and provide us with broadband, which they're not going to do. Yet. Make that pretty clear. Note that the, I spoke with a, with a person who was like a select person on, on Hampton select board yep. and he told me that the chairman of that board happens to be vice president of the co-op. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's correct. They got all this money and their first time to get their services was Campton. And what they provide them with is only internet and they have three levels, 50, 75, and a hundred dollars a month. They're not doing anybody any favors in their own community. They're making money hand over fist, and they want us to open them up so that they can go over there or not that soon know to provide power only to the golf community over there. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we should do it. They, uh, they have received about $60 million worth of uh, aid from three governmental units. And it's interesting to note that uh, at least for the federal money and the state money, it's not refundable. It's theirs to keep. They don't have to repay it. Now, the county money, I'm told, they're going to have to repay a portion of it. Don't know how much. Uh, I've asked for it, but I haven't received the information. Um, I'd say that's pretty lucrative uh, money, considering the Supreme Court ruled in 1953 that you cannot spend taxpayers' money on private property. So that's exactly what's going on here. Eventually, this is all going to come home to roost to somebody. Uh, Fifty million plus dollars worth of taxpayers' money that's not going to be returned to the taxpayers, is, and from which they're going to be making profits for the next hundred years, is uh, quite a good deal. I, I wouldn't mind having my own corporation be funded by uh, the federal government with no taxes for return and no money for return, um, with all kinds of money. So. My recommendation is don't do it because you're going to end up paying more to them. I will also note that uh, they gave them, I thought it was five million, but I guess it's two and a half million dollars from the county. Yes. Part yep. of that is Ashland money. Mm -hmm. yep. Ashland taxpayers pay the county fees. Yes. And they gave, we estimated, what, what, what did we estimate our taxpayers paid for that? At least a hundred thousand dollars. At least a hundred thousand dollars of taxpayer money. Broadband that we can't have. Mm -hmm. So we, no, we should understand that money could have been used to decrease the county tax rate. Instead, it was used to fund a private corporation for profit. Yeah. So, but aren't they offering to pay us to hook up to our poles? Yes, they are. Yeah, they are. About How very much? About ten, ten bucks a pole. <laughs> it's a joke. Well, this is attached based on your rate, so we could yeah. tell them what we want them to. Oh, I, I'd be in favor of 
charge you $50 million, right? Uh, <laughs> no, but seriously. Um, there are rights established by the, by the state and federal governments for what you can, you can charge. And we're looking and at somewhere $10. around $10, 10 or $11 for both. That's not a good deal. And then each one of our customers, assuming they are within 1,200 feet of a line, would be allowed to attach at 50, 75, or 100 dollars per month. That's a lot of money. Right. No it's television. No television. It's just, yeah, it's just not a bargain. bargain. Yeah. Just, right. just I was just computer. wondering yeah. how much they were going to pay us to the to the polls to not, see if it would be equitable for us. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is, is that uh, we do have a, a search for broadband money to do our own thing in right. town. So we don't want to take that possibility away from us. And so we could, if we could provide broadband for our city for in some way to get a grant for that, and we're trying it, uh, this would be much better for us to, to pass it off to somebody who's already got $60 million. No. Do I hear a motion on this? Or should we just decline to take it up? Yeah, I'll make, I'll make a motion to table that uh, request. So why are we tabling it? If we, we don't want it, want we don't want it. All right, I'll make a motion to decline the opportunity for the full attachment. I'll second. Okay. The motion is to decline the offer and to put it to bed. Anybody else want to talk about it? Any further <coughs> discussion? With the, uh, the, the motion is made by Moselle, second by Sotley. Uh, all those favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. Motion passes. Give me mm. By the way, this is the second attempt on this. Third attempt. Is it third? Okay, we may have requests for the boards, committees, and commissions. Um, probably take these up one at a time. Okay. This is just as it was, but. Motion made by Mr. Bozell, second by Ms. Hartley. 
to accept my motion as an alternate to the zoning board of adjustment. Uh, any, any further discussion or questions or answers? No. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I oppose it. Mike, you're a member. They're going to swear you in. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> have a, a request for appointment to the Capital Improvement Plan Committee. Planning Board first. Yeah, yeah Planning Board. Oh, oh Planning Board. I see. She made, she made three different, okay. Uh, we do, we do have an opening on the Planning Board, don't we? No, we don't. No, no we have an opening on the Zoning Board. Okay. No, no, we don't. We don't? Well, we have, we, have a, we have a seat that's open, but we have an the alternate wouldn't be full. Wouldn't well, the alternate can be the same person that we need. But this person put her paperwork in first. But she put down the third choice. Okay. okay. Is there any openings on the planning board? I don't believe so. No. No, I don't think so. Okay. Capital improvement? Because that was her two. And that was the only opening on the zone board? Yeah, well, the, the, the alternate fills it, yes. So there's only an alternate for permits. Right, yes. But, but she's asking for the permit. The alternate doesn't just step in, right? Well, well let's, let's look at it this way here. Uh, it's interesting. That doesn't show Megan is not served with any force, and she'd like to do that. And Mike is, uh, is on the Waste Energy Plan Committee. Would you be willing to allow Megan to go forward and then be on standby for another committee meeting, another committee home offering? I, I don't know her. I guess Mike? Yes. Uh, would you be willing to come down? I'm going to make sure question that we should. The alternate is just that, an alternate. They don't just get to step in. So. Well, you're already, yes, already a member of the yes, Waste Energy Committee. Right. They get to step in as somebody and Ms. absent. Ms. Samaro uh, has put her paperwork in before you did. I, I was not aware of this, so I'm trying to get this right. For uh, what? Uh, she put in her. For the zoning board. Okay. okay. So she put in first for the planning board, second for capital improvements, and third for the board, zoning board of adjustment. Okay. Uh, is Megan here? She's not. I'm just wondering if you were willing to step aside and let her go, and then we we'll keep you in in, in limbo. In, in a bay, in a yeah. Bay. No, I. Yeah, I know you want to serve others. I don't, yeah. You know, I've been on several boards okay in this. the past. You're not okay with that? No. Okay. Because I, there's an alternate that doesn't make the alternate automatically go into that position, in my opinion. No, I should that. So. We would make Megan the fifth member. Right, and the alternate still stays the alternate. As the alternate. So he would be the sixth member, and if one of the other members couldn't make it, then he would be there in their stead. Okay, so. No, I think that there's. How many are permanent right now? Four. And so, four. so we need Megan a fifth. Is the would be the fifth. And then he would be the alternate. Right. Oh. Okay, so, so now, now I've so, got a better, I've got a, okay, now I understand. I didn't realize it was an opening. So is the alternate okay. going to be the fourth? The one that's on there now as the alternate. It's the, it would be the fifth. There is no alternate. There is no alternate. Right. There's four members. Megan would be the fifth full-time member. Oh, I thought he was saying that there was an alternate. No, he would, would be the fourth. I'm sorry, I keep pointing Mike. to you and saying he, Okay, Mike. so, yeah. all right, so Mike, forget about it. You're, you're going to be an alternate. Okay. <laughs> You're good to go. already, we already did that. Mr. Chairman, the disappointment this that I was concerned about, this Megan has indicated that she is going to run for the select board next year. Okay. If you say a note to that. Yeah. Um, that is what gave me pause in terms of recommend, recommending her to the zoning board. The, the zoning board is a, a little bit complicated in, in terms of the, the rules and the procedures. and. It's not something where we should have an applicant for a couple of months and, and, and who has an other interests. Okay. But we can't, she would have to run for the position and then she would have to win the position and yeah. then once 
if well, that happened, then she would, you would also have a meeting at the thing and determine which selectman you would want to remain on the board. So I don't think that's a valid argument. Well, the the, the argument I would make, and I would, I would ask Mike this, that um, in, instead of appointing Mike as an alternate, I would appoint him as a full-time board member um, because of, of this express desire that uh, she's put it down number one as her third choice okay and then turns around and says well I'm running for the select board next year anyway uh, that's not the kind of board we uh, member we want for the zoning board the zoning board benefits from long-term appointments and you know people who are become knowledgeable in the process and the procedures uh, it, it's a quasi judicial function and, and it's something that has to be burned um, so if Mike would, you know, if, if the problem is that he's only going to, he's going to be nominated as an alternate, I, I, would, I would ask him to, be, to consider being a permanent member. And, and I don't know Megan at all, or. I, and I don't either. Um, I'm going to get rid of um, my thing is, you, you talk about, you know, going through everything the right way. We have paperwork that she took the time out to bring to us. Not nothing against yeah. anybody else. But um, the question is, is, is it the right choice? She's been in the town only for a couple of years, so maybe not even two. Uh, and, and again, has not come out and said, you know, if that paperwork said, you know, number one, I want to be on the zoning board, I, mean, I, I, I would see that in a completely different light. But, you know, Mike has been a vested member of the town. Uh, he's contributed in the past. And my, my sense of it is that he more fits, the, and I know, I don't know Megan that well, but my, Mike fits the kind of participant we'd like on that zone board, uh, who understands the town and has a vested interest that we know. Okay, and I, I, I hear you. We've already put Mike on the board, so that's done. Yeah, 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 yeah. So her second choice was capital improvement plan. When do we move on that? Yes, I think we that's don't very appropriate. Do we yeah. have a capital improvement yeah. plan committee? No. Oh. No. Maybe we should have it. Well, uh, let's put that. agenda so I feel like we already voted Mike in as the alternate I feel like we should vote her in as the actual fifth member of the zoning board I don't see anything from her qualifications that would indicate that she wouldn't make an excellent member of the board I do know that a fellow board member has been out working hard to try to bring people into that particular board because it's been lacking the needs of full board. Yeah, he's been working hard at it. Don't close that deal today. So that's the reason why the paperwork's not here. I'm, I'm aware of that. So I'm just saying, I'm not saying anything else that you, you should consider that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have two people that want to be on the zoning board of adjustment. So, uh, what about talking to her about her future plans? No, it's right in here. Uh, down. See what you know. If she's not going to be on the board, I mean, as a, as a full time member down three, the road, three months. maybe now would be the time for her to. Well, that's assuming she gets elected. Right. Right. I mean, I don't. I don't have a problem being an alternate for now, and you guys hashing it out with her or whatever. What, what you know, we, I'm fine with that. change it if you want to change it, but somebody has to make a motion to get the vote. I would make the motion to uh, approve my bill as a permanent member of the zone board. We have a second. Uh, I'll second it for, for, for the, 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 for the
need a second. Now any more discussion? Seeing none. Uh, those in favor would say aye. 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 Opposed. Opposed. motion to table the application request uh, until we have more information regarding her uh, desire to serve, her qualifications, and what her plans are. But that hasn't been what our, we have, if we don't, there's two things. One, if we do that, then she will not be allowed to go to the next meeting, which is January 4th. And second, that's not what we've done with any other board member that has given us this piece of paper. Well, if we don't, we have a full board. There's no need to rush. I mean, with the alternate, we have, we have Let full it's going to be two, two minutes going to in January. Pass. And so I don't think we have to rush this. Um, she she hasn't been clear in her desire to you know, what she wants to do. I mean, at this point, I, I think the whole capital was a capital improvement. Um, I mean, I, I, we should talk to her to see if you know it's something she wants to you know, well, start. Apparently, we don't have one. So. Well, you know, it's it's something that you know we should perhaps talk about sort of economic development or whatever. She seems to have an economic background, from what I know. Okay, well, we can do that later, and she can be on more than one committee. So let's go forward. If you made the motion, is anybody going to second it? What motion do you make? To table this. Yes. I disagree with that. I will second it. Simply because it doesn't sound, it sounds like the, the fact that you plan on one of those selectable three months time if she was elected she would have to be the board. <coughs> That's not necessarily true. You could choose whichever one you want. Well you really have to be appointed by the by the selected at the time. True. Right. And you do all those in March anyway. Right. Uh -huh. all, the, all the people we have selected for the zoning board are committed to the process in the long term. It's important in that board. Uh, it's it's a complicated it's not a stepping stone. It's not a stepping stone for somebody. There's something else behind this. That's, uh, I would have liked to have a conversation. I'm not arguing with anybody. So, uh, so you seconded it. I did second. to appoint her to the zoning board. I'll second. Okay. Slippery floor. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded. You okay? Okay, so this is a request of the DW to purchase the truck. Uh, yep. Greg, you want to come up here and talk to us about this? I know you have some, some bids here. Yep. So I, um, I don't know if you've been working, probably 
six months and getting prices back and forth and once you get down to it, you know, they're getting prices back and they change all the time. And so we've got to nail down to all the trucks you see in front of you. I don't know if you have any questions. <coughs> um, I did go at the request of Andy uh, today to go up and meet with Donnie Matulip. So him and I met with Donnie and, uh, concerning the trucks. He wanted me to get an expert opinion on it, real truck drivers. Um, so, well, you know, we do it a lot, but really we're not we're part time because we're doing other things. We don't drive these trucks every day. So, and he does. And, to get his opinion, so we actually gave him all of these quotes, and he went through and by each one of them. Um, so, and the first, the, the truck he liked the best was, and the same thing we do is the the one from Fairfield for this, the 2024 Western Star. Um, so uh, that's that's what we'd like to put on the warrant. The 2024 Western yeah. Star. Yeah. Okay. So just, just a little bit of history. That is the only truck in the state of New Hampshire that would be available um, this summer some, at some point. They're not in yet. The other trucks, every one of them, are 2025, Q2, Q3, Q4, before we'd even get the chassis to build it. The current truck that we have is a, um, a 2005 Mac. It is pretty tired. The clutch is about ready to fail in it. The estimates of replacing that clutch is about six to eight thousand um, dollars. When I asked the Matt guy how much he'd give me for that truck, and he'd give me the most because he deals with Matt's, is about fifteen to sixteen thousand dollars right now. So that's about the value of the Mac. So to put that kind of money into the truck which we don't know if it'll, once it won't make a hill, it's parked, it can't be used anymore. This is the truck you plow the town with. This is the truck we plow right now. Um, every one of our trucks plows hills and valleys. And there's not one single truck that doesn't plow a hill. Um, so it's it's due, it's almost, it will be 20 years old by the time we uh, get it. Um, so we'd like to put it on warrant this year. It's, not in, it's not 100% imperative, but we're gambling. We could wait. They said there could be about a 6 to 8% increase next year on these vehicles um, if we waited. Um, so it's a gamble. Yeah. Any questions on the what you guys looked over? Or? Well, I spoke with Andy at length this afternoon about it. Uh, he's uh, very familiar with trucks. Read about it, and ones we're looking to do a warrant out of it on it. We don't have any money to buy it. No, we have actually $109,000 right now in capital reserve, which would be available. Yeah, but we don't have 290000 No, we'd have to we'd have to raise taxes like right. we did a few years ago to pay for the sidewalk plow, <clears throat> or we could decide later on to do a lease purchase. Um, that's what we did with the loader. Back in 2018, <clears throat> we did a lease purchase for five years. If you wanted to extend it out for five years, but that's up to the board to, to which how they would want to go. The interest rates are really high right now. Back then, they were really low. Right. It would cost us probably yeah. two percent last time when we did that lease purchase, two or three percent. What do they have? Six, seven. I think they are. Uh, maybe Marissa would know better. I don't know what Marissa, I mean, I'm guessing <laughs> municipal bonds were. There's a bus coming your way. <laughs> well, I don't know. Have you ever seen them out there? I don't know. I'm guessing they are about around six I, or seven. I think you're on six or seven. Yeah. Let me ask Fred a question. Fred. <laughs> Not uh, sure why I would know that, Craig, but. Well, you're the finance person. I thought you might know that. <laughs> Sir. And I would include you in a question as well. If we were to put some kind of deposit down on the truck, then the warrant article would be for the for the balance, correct? Correct. Right. Is that what your intention is? Is that your intention? I can't tell you that because he mentioned that it could be as high as an eight percent increase next year. Well, 
I see. No, 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 if we wait until 2025. Yeah, well. This truck, this quote from Fairfield for the 2024 is good. And if if we place the order, they hold it. if we were to place the order, this quote's good until March 31st. So if we were to place the order, give them a down payment after, it, if it passed, then they would hold the price. Can we do a down payment to pending purchase and approval by the approval and purchase by the town? I suppose you can if you vote it and the town, town meeting agrees with it. Well, but, but the dealership agree with it. They give us well, what we would do, Bob, is we would write the warrant article for the full amount, $109 to come out of capital reserve, right? And then the remainder be raised by taxes. Okay. That's how we have done it in the past. As okay. a reminder, that would completely deplete that capital reserve. Right. Yeah, exactly. Which well, means you have no capital reserve fund to put money reserves. in the following year. Something else right. happens. I, I don't know that. You could leave, uh, take a hundred grand out, leave 9,000 in there, whichever you guys decide. It's up to you guys. But we right now the balance is about 109. We've gotten the payment for this year. If the 25,000 passes next year, that we all, it always does pass. That following year, there'd be another 25,000 to put in in 2024. But that payment doesn't go in until November. Ish. I guess. Yeah, that's true. Thank you. So there would be some residual left. We'd start essentially the capital reserve over again. Well, I think that. Those discussions will be later. First discussion will be whether or not we're going to put this on the board. Right. So, um, and, and I, I'm with the reserve on this. That we don't want to drain the capital reserve. You just can't do that. If something happens, you got to have you got to have a that. So I'm not afraid of that. Okay. So, all right. We need a motion to put this particular vehicle on the wall. So right, right exactly. So, is there a second? I'll second. A second by Ms. So Ms. you want to put the whole thing on the warrant? Yes. Nothing is going to come from DPW. Well, on. that will happen once the article is approved. Then we can negotiate what we will do, what we will take out of capital reserve. We cannot <coughs> do it. No, we just can't do it. But if you put that amount on the warrant, that's <coughs> what it's asking for. Right, exactly. That's, you, gotta, you can't spend that kind of money unless you ask the voters if you can't spend that kind of money for that particular vehicle. That's what it costs, and that's what you have to put on the warrant. My suggestion is that if you're going to put that on the warrant, you have the money go to the capital reserve fund, and you can pay for it out of that because you are already the uh, in control of those funds. And if something goes wrong, you still get the money. Okay. Right. So, and that you do the whole amount. In Right. So the exactly. whole Warren article would have the whole number, and mm -hmm. then you yep. tell them inside of the Warren article how much comes from where. Oh, yep. I thought we were asking them. I knew that what you. Whole yeah, thing. I knew what you were saying. Yeah. So, you need an amendment on this. Amendment. Do you want to put the total the total amount on the warrant on the on the capital reserve, or do you want to make it the truck? I'm not saying no, anything. No, no, it's up. Is that the suggestion? We put the money in the capital reserve fund and take out what we need to pay for the truck? Yes. That's what he said. Yep. Okay. Then if something happens, uh, like it did in the electric department, where all of a sudden the truck's not available, right? Okay, you still yep. have the money. Exactly. You're not, you have you the money. Do what you need to do. Do what you need to do. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to amend the article to include the cost of this truck in the capital reserve fund.
everybody understand that? Colin? I, I understand it, um, and, and I get Fred's point, but we're buying a truck with the, our, our intent here is to buy a truck. The intent is to buy a truck. Right, yeah. I, I think for the for the town, you need to say we want to buy a truck. Right. You know, well, it'll be in the warrant, that's what it's for. Will the warrant say for the purpose of buying a, because we're putting this in the, in the dirt fund. Right. Right. Say that purpose, it's for the purpose of this purpose actual of the, truck. For the truck. With the amount. So if the truck does not become available, or they try to raise the okay. price. But it will have the amount in, in the warrant. Yes. Okay. Fine, I'm okay with that. But if we put the specific truck and that truck's not available, then we can't do it. Right. But the so money you're not going to put the yeah. specific truck. Right. You say for a truck. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Because you never know. And then it is, it is a, Craig has said, the trucks are not being built. We had the same problem at the end of this year, Paul. Uh, hopefully the animals will be here. Protect yourself. But most of them are telling us 25 and, and further beyond. My question is, when we go to deliberative session and they say how many is, how much is in the fund now, and we say 109,000, they're gonna wonder why we're asking for 290. And I totally get that. Yeah, no, I get that, because we want to buy the truck. And, uh, so not, not and the fleet will, you know, I, I don't want to deplete the, the, the capital reserve fund. It's, just, it's not a wise decision. Well, why do we have it if we're not well, going to use it? We need to use some of it for this. The capital reserve yeah. is for the purchase of, it says it right in it, for yeah. the purchase of a replacement truck. Right. Yep. And, and the repair, and if we had the cash truck goes down, down and, 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 you know, and it goes to a fire right. and it blows up, yep. In the, in the past, we've just taken a certain amount out of right. the capital reserve right. to put so towards the purchase. I think someone already found the nine thousand dollars, but we have before the past. Mean it's fine. Yeah. Sure. Oh, so what Ann is saying, the cons what her concern is, but putting in two hundred and ninety thousand five fifty two as the capital reserve fund, so you're adding to the hundred and nine, not using some of the funds that's already existing. Right, because that hundred nine will still be there. Yes. So, no, they got that money in the capital reserve to use. So right. let's use some of it. So don't ask for the whole thing. Right. We have to no, write no, the whole at the beginning of the warrant article it has to say that we're going to right. buy a truck for this amount. Right. Right. And then in the verbiage underneath, that's not what they're saying. They were saying to yeah. do the t whole two hundred ninety and then keep the hundred nine because they don't want to take it out. Right. I don't want to do that. I want part of it to come from the capital reserve. Well, no, I, I understand that. I mean, we said that we would do that. that we're gonna I just take, don't want to drain it. We're going to take, like, we're going to leave 9000 in the capital reserve. Let's ask the director, when's your next truck replacement coming? After the, if we replace this one? Yeah. It'll be, it would be uh, 20, let's see, uh, 24, 29. 2029. But if you ask for 290, that's what they're going to agree on or disagree on. So if they agree on it, that whole amount is going into his capital reserve. So we'd have four years of 25,000 again that would give us 100 grand to start over again to buy a new truck it in 2029. understand what Ann's trying to say is that you're not including like okay 290,000 because you have to put that whole thing in right but then with some other sum coming from the already existing capital reserve fund that's what she's saying we yeah we have to have the authority to spend that amount of money for the truck out of the capital reserve fund right yeah that's you're on the same page there but then she's saying that you need to use some of the money did stand out. That's in existence. Yeah. So Correct. that's where I think the amendment needs to come in is that she's saying to amend so that you can include some of the existing funds. My suggestion would be to take 90,000, 90, you know, 90, not the 109. You know. That's up to you, board yeah, members. I was trying to help yeah. interpret. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least leave 10 grand in there. So shouldn't we put in 200,000 
with 90,000 to come out of the... You would still do the total number right. and then whatever you want to take from the CRM. With this much? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because it was sounding like we were going to get 290 to go in the capital reserve. Right. And that nothing that, would be used. That was not the intent. Right. But that's the wording that but, was coming out. Okay. So you need to have the authority to spend that amount of money for that particular truck. With from the, from 90 the coming out right. of... The capital, the capital reserve and the 200 coming from taxes. Right. Correct. That was my whole thing. <laughs> 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 Ten minutes later. <laughs> We're all on the same page. Yes, we are. All right. Yeah. So, Marissa, and did we have a second? <laughs> you seconded. Beautiful. Yes. I was just perfect. making sure. Okay. Would you so. like me to write in there somewhere <laughs> that you're going to use 90000 from the... Okay. Yes. 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 <laughs> 90000 would come from the... From the capital capital reserve fund. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So you do have a second. <laughs> Catch <Right>. up. <laughs> and should the voters decline to it, uh, don't we normally put in $25,000 a year in that account? That yeah. warrant article is already it's in the warrant. It's a different article. That's oh, right. it's a different article? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. Okay. So then that means we'd have that 25 plus the 10 that's left open, and we would be. You know, we'd have something in reserve yes. for emergency. And that's what my concern was. Okay, let's go. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> None opposed. We move forward. The motion passes. Sorry, sorry for the confusion, Craig. It's a big amount of money. And it's, it's like, Thanks, me, Wayne. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of money, and people want to know what their money is being used for. And I understand it's an important piece of equipment for the town. So far this year, we've had to buy, you know, the ambulance, the sidewalk flowers, and all the other things we have to do. It's just so many things going on. And you wonder why we need a power plant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up, please. Okay. Request vacants. So I see a lot of abatements here, and I talked to <coughs> Tom Yearn about it today, and I'm pretty upset about the fact that the, the company had given so many bills to Patsy and said, no, uh, on all these people, these have never happened. Uh, he's told me that we have to be looking at another assessment company so we can run into this again. Mm. And these things should never happen. We're going to go through a, a series of assessments here. Uh, number one, on the, uh, abatement of $311.40 on account number 109-066. Property merger bills should not have been issued. I'll make that motion. And yes, second. And, and seconds it. Mm -hmm. and all in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Pass it around for signature. Just the top one. Excuse me? What is that? What is that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Next one is uh, abatement for Camper and Ames Brook, $69.20. Camper was moved three years ago. We'll make that motion. I'll second it. Uh, the motion was made and seconded to abate Ames Brook Campground $69.20. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? Motion passes. Next one is an abatement to a boat slip at River Street. Duplicate billing of $3,237.40. I'll make that motion. Motion's been made. I'll second it. Seconded by Ms. Barney. And all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Motion passes. I know I'll get a teach out here. I'm, I'm doing two things in one. So. OK. 
Okay. That's what all the stuff that like. we just did. Oh, yeah. Okay. Next one, what, 867? Next one is another duplicate of another one that's been removed. Uh, Bateman and Camp are no longer in the campground for $8.67. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Motion made by Ms. Hartley, second by Ms. Barney. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unopposed. that with another one on here. So. We do. No, yeah. don't. They're different names. Where is it? This one has nothing to do with the other one. Which one are we talking about? Which one's in your hand? Oh, that's I for, can't read it from there. That's for um, that's the different. veterans credit? That's, 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 that's coming up as a separate item. It's not because they're two separate people. One no. is a completely different person. Right, no, but it's it's item number. Isn't it old? Oh, it was done on no, your, on that's a completely uh, different person. Oh, it is? Yes. Oh. They both have the same first name, but they're completely <laughs> different people. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. I, pro I promise. I, I believe you. <laughs> I pinky swear. All right, all right. Okay. <laughs> Got you. So this is the veterans one. No. It's, no. It says <laughs> the veterans credit was removed off of their thing. However, the veterans credit other one is one that we need to uh, give the veterans credit to the other person. Totally different people. So this is removing this one's the amount from the tax roll. Because their the veterans credit was taken off of their tax bill. It was Unnecessarily. It was already approved. The other one we haven't approved them before. We need to approve them. Okay. I see that. Yep. Thank you. So here is the, the motion we need for that. The veterans tax credit times two, two pieces of property, amount of flight, seven hundred and fifty dollars. So the abatement removes this that amount from each of the tax rolls. So the amount is fifteen hundred dollars. So I'll make the motion on that to apply the veterans tax credit people that I happen to know are veterans and was not applied appropriately. I'll second. Okay, motion is made and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 I recuse myself. And you, and you, okay, and recuse. Okay. Thank you. And motion does pass. Thank you. Is this the one I'm going to sign? Yeah. Or do you have another one over there? No, this is tree cutting. Cut the tree. It's okay. I I'm probably on paid. Oh, that can't. Before I give you a challenge, give me a Okay, so next one is the tax cutting. Uh, the, the, the tree cutting. The, 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 the cutting. <laughs> Nothing like a nice tree. Yeah. Maybe we use Intent to tax, uh, to cut on the uh, tax map. 212-004 McDonald Road. And uh, as you know, if we don't approve it, the state will approve it anyways and we'll get nothing for it. So we need a motion to approve the tax, uh, the, the intent to cut. I'll make that motion. Okay. 
decision was made to approve the tax, the intent to cut a tax map 212 004. Second. Second by Mr. Spartel. Any, any further discussion? No discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes. Signature on the A5, A-5W warrant to complete file. And that's in here someplace. There's two of them. And they're for current use of tax penalties. They've both been already been paid, but we have to sign them in order to put them in the warrant. Because the warrant was not issued. Done this? We it says the A type of the section, but it's not signed. So we just have to sign, we don't have to vote? Yeah. We? They've already been paid, but. Yeah. But did we vote on it? Yeah. Is, was it approved? You'll have to vote on it. Okay. So we need a motion to approve signing of the A 5W award to the file. We already. Apparently, apparently they're for current use done. tax penalties that were never warranted. They never went before the board. Right. They have to be warranted, and the board has to sign them. They've already been paid. Otherwise, the the accounts won't balance. Next item up is the uh, capital reserve funds request for the town buildings. You have already uh, approved the, the normal request for that, which we do every year, which is ten thousand uh, dollars. But we have to rewire and replumb the town hall in order to make sure that uh, the air conditioning and the which needs to be replaced because the unit that's in there now is gone. Uh, they don't have one in the police station. That needs to be fixed, too. And the police control the heat. So if there's nobody there, the town hall is colder than the... <laughs> we can use it as a refrigerator sometimes. So, so we're, we're, we're going to ask for an extra $35,000 in order to redo all the plumbing and the uh, electrical work. If we can get a quote for less, then I'll include that. But just to let you know what's going on.
So you've already voted on all of these items. Mm -hmm. I'm just need you to sign it so that I can get the money back from the trustees. <laughs> there you go. Okay. And then I need you to sign two other ones. Thank you, Police Chief Will. Oh yes, I yeah for the wrap and uh, for the wraps for car one and car two. Yeah. So and I will need a vote on those in the district. Mm -hmm. You could just include car one and car two. That's okay. fine. to file for a grant to place at Thompson Street Waterline. I can speak on that. Yes, you can. Um, so Andrew and I have been trying to find out what's out there um, for grant money because you have the Winona Project, the Thompson Street Project, and um, our existing issue with the old mill building. Mm -hmm. um, that plays into his facility. Um, so we just need authorization to go ahead and make these applications. It's something that if we do it ahead of time, we have a better understanding of how much we can get in grant funding. Um, the Thompson Street Project, we think would greatly benefit from some of the meetings we've had where you can fund up to 80% of the project, and that's a hefty cost project. Yes, uh, it is. <laughs> so we just need authority so that we can go out and do all of these kind of an emergency too. It is. I mean, we won't know. Um, these things take time, and as Fred's indicated, we have to put these things on the warrant, you know, the total project costs. But if we can start finding out how much money we can get, right. it really helps the whole process. It sure does. But it's an easy thing to have to be done in a reasonable way. We don't have the money to do it. Yeah, and I'll give props to Andrew, who's been seeking out everybody. So we've had meetings with CDPG. We've had meetings oh, yeah. with the Lakes Region Planning Commission. Really got the ball rolling to find out what's out there. Now we just need authority to do 
proceed with it. <laughs> okay, so the motion is to approve the authority for the staff, the, the uh, town manager and staff to file for grants to replace Thompson Street one line. And should I include the one owner and the, the mill building as well? Fred, can they just give like general authority to apply for grants for the Certainly can. projects? I would yeah. just give. So we have three projects that need to be done. And so we can replace all of the water projects that we need in the town to do up for replacement. So these three projects are all must. I'll second that, Bob. Okay, thank you. So, uh, anybody understand the question? Next thing I'm going to list is the request for a veteran's exemption. You have already voted on that, the one for $1,500 that you abated? Yes. Okay. That's one of them. We, well, that's the one I'm concerned about for this particular item. Um, you know, no, this is a no, different this is a person different altogether. This is, this is a different one. Right here. Do you want me to finish or do you want oh, me to just finish right, it for me? Go right ahead. You right. can. Okay. There's no paperwork to authorize this for a state exemption. I'm looking for permission from the board to go ahead and generate the paperwork through the state. Otherwise, when the State Department of Revenue comes in and audits, that exemption is going to disappear because it's not properly filed. I'm sorry. That's, uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get this done out of order so that we won't have that problem and end up with another abatement, which we don't need. Um, they originally filed for an abatement. It never went to the Board of Selectmen. That's why we had the $1,500. So it was misplaced, it was put someplace, it just wasn't handled. Um, we, we corrected the money, which is important because that has an effect upon the individual. Um, but if they want to keep the exemption, there's a whole pile of paperwork that goes with it that I have not seen and I don't believe has actually been filed. So oh. I, I want to go out and get that paperwork, get it done, bring it to the board for signature, so that it makes it for an official exemption under the statute. And when the audit, the state comes to audit it, it won't get bounced. For the one that we did already? Yep, for the one for $1,500. We already signed those last year. They, it has come to the board already. We already signed it and approved it last year. Well, fine, then. then but you, I, I, I don't know that that's done because I've received a complaint with regards to this because it was not processed last year never came to the board. Uh, I don't show anything that was signed and I'm concerned about that. Okay. Uh, because if, if not everything is in order, when the state comes and does the audit, it will disappear. And I don't want that to happen. No, I, I support you on that. So, so something may come back to you if we can't find all the proper paperwork for you to sign. So where's the DD 214 that you need? No, I've got DD 214. I don't okay. have the state forms. Oh, okay. So you have to use the. And you, you, you as the as the assessors have to actually sign the state forms for each of these exemptions. Okay. And I can't find one that's signed for this. That's my problem. And when they come to audit, if it's not there, they'll just say, "Sorry, gone. You lost your exemption." Uh, and, and that's not going to help anybody. It's just so paperwork stuff drives you crazy. That's all that is, <coughs> and that's enough. What are you looking for? You want to make a vote on this, or you just want to? No, I just, vote? I just, I'm just, i just telling you that I'm going to bring information, a, okay. an additional piece of information for you at another yeah. meeting sign. Right. Okay. So this won't bounce, okay. so to speak. Gotcha. All right. We already have enough bouncing stuff going. Well, yeah. I agree with that. So, yeah. My question is, how did that happen? Uh, I could I could give you an answer to that, but I'm not going to do it in public session. Okay. All right. 
think people need to be embarrassed because something got messed up. Okay. Uh, we need to sign the 2023 Municipal Assessment Data Certificate. Yeah, I'm wondering if I can find it here. Too much paper. That's the one that goes in next week. I was concerned about that, as I told you earlier today. Yeah. But all the mistakes that the assessing company has made. Is, well, there's a couple. Yeah. And we don't need them. But we do need to file the necessary forms with the state to make the, to make the reassessment legal. That's what I'm trying to find. Unfortunately, this all comes at the very, very end of the year. Of course. Well, there's a whole pile of other gobbledygook to get taken care of. So I'm gonna put in an you know, orange article to stretch out the year. Huh. <laughs> get Congress to start yeah, changing a couple stuff. Of to the, to the year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. to give it to you at the next meeting. Friend Becky's got a copy of it. Does she? Yeah. I yeah. do right here. Yep. Okay, good. Do who would Yep. There you, <laughs> go. there you go. That's good. Good deal. Okay. Just need so to get rid of it in front of us. We're gonna use this one. That's fine. Yeah. Absolutely use it. This one this one's a legal document. Perfect. So the motion will be to approve the municipal Assessment data certificate right. for the town of Ashland. For the 20, can you want to put a date in there? For today's date is fine. Today's date. Yeah, the for today's date. The 18th. 18, 2023. Yeah. It's before December 31st. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now you have a second. I'll second it. Mr. Bozell seconds the motion. Everybody understand the question? favor please say aye. 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 You opposed? No, no, no one's opposed. I'll send this around. Motion passes. Please sign it. Now I find it. <laughs> now you find it. No, it's okay. We just it's all right. We have no, it. We can use that one. Give we have a spare. For a file. <laughs> no, it's all good. Just okay. sign it. Okay. Unfortunately, all this reassessment data came uh, right at the end of the year. Well, that's when it shows up in the tax bills. Well, it's, and unfortunately, that's the way it happens. That's not the way the system was designed. No, I get that. And it's, it's unfortunate. I know. I designed it's not the system. Happen. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, question number Q. Question of a warrant article to create a capital reserve fund for the new police station. For a new police station. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been discussing this for a couple of years now. And we need to start moving forward on this. Been around the block. And we just missed an opportunity to, to purchase a beautiful piece of property that would have worked very well for us because we didn't have any money, we couldn't do it. So we need a reserve fund to put aside. I'll make a motion that we approve a warrant article to be created to, have to create a capital reserve fund for the purpose of a new police station. And am I, are we going to fund it? I don't know. How much you want to put in this, Greg? Uh, you tell me. It's going, yeah. to be, it's going to be an increase to tax rate, so. Well, that's... Yeah, uh, twenty-five thousand. Yeah, I think twenty-five thousand. You know, because we will look for bonding, we'll look for we'll look for grants, and, and that's all of the future. But right. It, right now, we need something as a placeholder. Right. <coughs> twenty-five thousand. I'll second the motion. Okay. Any 
further discussion? Everybody understand the motion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. The motion passes. Any to hold business? I just need to find somebody who can donate twenty five thousand dollars. Well, I get it. Any old business? No, no old business. Selectman's items. I have two. Okay. Hey. Ms. Hartley. Mr. Chairman, would you please square me into the ambulance committee? I will. Um, it would be my honor. Thank you. Please, please go to the square. <laughs> <laughs> I can attest to that. <laughs> and I, I had all that paperwork right here. <laughs> Now I gotta find it again. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those you told me to wait I am so disorganized that I am something to do. It's been, it's been a uh, frustrating couple of days for me, too. Yeah. There you go. Right here. And I know it wasn't too far away. Okay, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Rebecca Hartley. I, Rebecca Hartley. Do solemnly and sincerely swear and affirm. Do solemnly, solemnly and sincerely swear to swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge all the, and, per, and perform all the duties incumbent upon me. And discharge all the duties incumbent upon me. As a member of the ambulance study committee. As a member of the ambulance study committee. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeable to the rules and regulations. Agreeable to the rules and regulations. Of the Constitution and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. Of the Constitution and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God, I do this under the pains and penalties of perjury. So help me God, I do this upon the pains and perjury. What? Pains and penalties of perjury. <laughs> you are sworn in. several copies. No, the other ones are for the other two members that I will swear in at a later date. Okay. okay. Getting ahead of the game. Right. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. You have to sign it up here and date it. Excellent. Thank you, sir. You are welcome.
Um, yep. So I have been promised that we have our license through the end of next year. So we've paid for our license for our current software, um, which is a localized, um, it's like a localized program, so it's not hosted on the internet, so they can't take away our license whenever they want. Um, so we have it for the end of 24, um, but I've been told that in 2025, we will have to switch to whatever their new product is, which they don't have currently. Um, they're working on it. So we've gone ahead and looked at other vendors because I don't know what product they're gonna put out, but we were a fan of the current product that BMSI had, but now that they're merged with somebody else, I just don't know what that looks like. Um, so we had a meeting with, I talked to MRI at the municipal conference back in November. Um, and we had them come in. So they have an office in Plymouth, so they're very local to us. Um, and they actually said that that's one of the attractive things about working with us, is that if we have like something on site that is just not working right, they're happy to just come on down. Um, they developed this software to take into account all of the New Hampshire accounting laws, if you will. Um, so it's the way that it functions, it has to do specifically with New Hampshire. They didn't develop it for anywhere else. They developed it for New Hampshire. Um, so we sat through a three hour demo and there's a lot of great features to this that would cut down on some of the back and forth that we have to do with the MSI. Um, so I asked them to put together a quote that showed what we need, and then there's a couple wants on there, so we don't have to get those, but I had them include it. Um, there's a budgeting development tool which would save every department head's life in having to recreate their narratives and their budgets every year. It's a lot of holdover data, so if you wanna see what you've spent right now in comparison to last year, it can do that. Um, right now, I send everybody a manually updated Excel sheet and they manually have to make all these updates and I hope they don't send me more than one sheet. Because um, sometimes I get five or six and I go, which one's the newest one? Um, so I'm just cracking jokes, that's not real. Um, so, <laughs> so, uh, so this quote encompasses a one time, one time, we only pay this one time, uh, $25,000 to set it up convert it. Um, what they do too is they come in, and this is, I've not never talked to a company about software that does this. They come in, they sit, they see how you do your processes right now, and they set this up in a manner in which you can use it more efficiently. So they'll come in as part of their implementation process to go, how do you do this currently? And then they configure this setup to make it the most efficient way for you to keep doing what you're doing. Um, there's also an added benefit to, um, they've worked with our auditors to see if some of the stuff that they implemented, such as like document uploading. Um, right now when we do the audit, I have to have backup material for every single adjustment I make, so I make a lot of photocopies of things. You can upload those documents, tie them straight to your um, accounting adjustments, and then give your auditors access to your internal system. So they actually have worked with our current auditors to make sure that that's something that they would appreciate or to kind of help go paperless in a sense. Um, but it keeps track of who did what and when they did it and when they submitted it. Um, I could get into very technical information if you want it. Um, but Luann and I saw a lot of things that we gasped and went, that would make that so much easier. Um, so there's a one-time fee. They did uh, include a discount. Um, due to some conversations that I don't know are out there, um, but they're on your quote. Um, and then there is an annual support and maintenance um, fee as well as hosting, so that is, um, they have everything in a secure uh, offsite server. Um, so that's what that hosting fee is. They've also- um, What is their annual cost? So they, the annual support right now is 5,681. The hosted installation, so that's um, that's also a yearly reoccurring, is 1,750. Um, so you're looking about the same that we currently pay for BMSI. Um, and then there's the one-time charges just to get everything set up, cleaned up. We talked about some of the um, things that just are like not so tidy, like 
like Anne can attest to this, we've tried to look at her revenue growth and they're not all sitting right next to each other like they should be. Um, so they can help us during conversion clean those things up uh, to streamline it, put it into a better formatting. Uh, they've also, like I was saying, they did this for New Hampshire, so there is um, there are reports that we have to submit to DRA, and what this does is it, instead of having to manually put every number in <laughs> and add it, um, or track it down, because BMSI is in like different areas, you can actually just pull the DRA reports, because they code them in accordance with DRA. Uh, they did say that they would be willing to break out the upfront cost if you want to do a lower cost and you would just pay it over a few years, um, which I can discuss with him if this is something we want to move forward on. Um, because he knows that we're already in our budget season, so we can't just all of a sudden pull $25,000 into a budget. Um, so he's willing to work with us on a payment plan. Well, actually, it's more like 33000 by the time you add the other fees to it. Right, which we would be responsible for the annual fees initially because you, uh, well, I think actually it's, I have to double check with him. Um, I think he said that wouldn't take place until after we've implemented. Um, so the, the one time fee of 25000 is that include any time for the current year that they're putting it in or it's just a one time set of fee? In other words, if, if you're paying an annual fee, any of the annual fee included at 25k for the first year? Nope. So they're broken up separately. There's the annual fees, which we outlined. So that's the 5681 and the 1750. Yep. And then the upfront cost is the actual software conversion and training. Okay. So they're two separate things. Okay. Uh, so in this uh, quote, the first two are required. We have to have those. Those are the uh, general ledger, which is the accounting software, and the accounts payable, so we can pay our bills. Um, the bank reconciliation, uh, purchasing approval, which again, I could sit here and tell you all right. the great things about that. Right. And budget development are my needs, not wants. <laughs> or um, wants, not needs. <laughs> so uh, realistically, you could cut this down. Well, it, it, it would probably, because you only have two people in the office, you would open up some time to do other work you have to do. Yeah, we do a lot of runaround reports too. Um, one of the great features of this, no matter what modules you take into account, is uh, your department heads, if they need a report, they actually have access to go in and just look at their stuff whenever they want for whatever reports they think they need, um, revenues related to that. Because um, we do, uh, which totally fine, we'll do it for everybody. <laughs> but. Um, you know, if you need something at a moment's notice, you actually have access to it yourself, and you don't pay per license for it, so it's one license for the town, and they built this off of me saying up to 10, so I think if you go over certain thresholds, it would go up, but. So you mentioned something about the possibility of, of breaking up the payments. Yeah, so he, um, like I said, he sent this to me on Friday and said he's willing to come and talk to the board if you'd like. Um, they're local, so they're just over in Plymouth. Um, but he said, you know, if you need to break it over over the course of a few years to pay for the, um, the one-time fee, the one -time fee, he's willing to work with us, um, be especially because I had mentioned to him, I said we're already fully in the budget process at this point. Right. Um, so, yeah, he'd be willing to work with us. With the option of paying it off if we had... Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Are and they the developer of this uh, software? They are. So one of the other great things about them is that actual um, finance officers helped with this. <laughs> so it's not just like an engineer creating. It's also practical application of it because those are two different things. Um, so they, I can't remember if he said that they worked with somebody else and kind of. Uh, worked with them to develop this or if they saw what was out there and then developed but this is a fairly new in the last few years Moultonboro was the first company I mean a uh, town to go with them to do this um, but they have it I think they said about 25 or 26 towns now use it um, so they're slowly yeah, so branching out. Just one technical question. Sure. The database that they use do they tell you? Sorry? The database they use, do they type? Is it open, proprietary? Uh, it's through Amazon servers. 
which apparently are some of the largest server bases. Well, so it's a cloud-based application. It is, okay. yeah, which is different than what we currently have, um, but they assured me that it is like of the highest uh, quality to like front yeah, level Amazon, locker, good. and it's two different ones, so not all of your data is one place, it's, it's backed up. exactly. It's not in one place, and then uh, the imaging I talked about, like scanning imaging, that's held separately, so you're not like consuming your own cloud space. They house those separately so that the system can keep on running no matter how many images you upload to it. Nice, yeah. I, yeah. Had, I had read a article on the services that Amazon companies like them, how they handle that data back up. And they change those hard drives, even if they're still good, they change them regularly. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they run them so many hours and they just put them in. Yeah, cloud server. Yeah, cloud server. You don't, you don't want your own computers. No, they can't, well, they have yeah. redundant systems as well. Yeah. This system can be localized data if needed. Yeah. Um, they did point that out because right now we use a localized license so uh, it can be converted to that in the event of some sort of concern but um, it is primarily cloud based okay. so we're but right now we're good through next year are you looking to start this before then right so you wouldn't want to go to the year end because then that doesn't give us time to use our current software to make sure that the new software is all balanced out so we wouldn't want to run it that close ideally we would want to switch um, like end of Q2, so that you have overlap of the two systems to make sure that everything is all, um, it's just all set, you know, so that your numbers match everywhere. Um, apparently their conversion doesn't take very long because they have it kind of dialed in, uh, but, and they would take over about five years worth of data unless we request to have additional years of data backed up. <laughs> history, 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 making the history available. Exactly, yeah. Fred, is that, is that enough five years of history for a town computer system? It should be plenty. Yeah, yeah. We would download and rip off as much information yeah. off of BMSI before we would move Yeah, you store it. Yeah, it just wouldn't be accessible uh, yeah. in there. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Fred says that's all right. <laughs> so, suggestion would be to negotiate with them on, on this yeah. fee payment so that we could develop a warrant article for it. it, it represents what you need, right? Is that what you want to do, or do you want to pay for it some other way? Well, it's going to be some, it's, we've got to pay for it somehow, so right, it's going to exactly. have to be an appropriation. Right, right, no, but I mean, you know, if you want to just have a separate warrant article, you want it part of the No, the I think office. we're trying to put this in the budget, right? Right, the yeah. budget. So okay. be a budgetary yeah. Yeah. That's what I was getting at. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. All right, okay. That doesn't make I don't want to start I mean, doing accounting as a warrant yeah. article. No, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> we have to keep our software up to date. Mm -hmm have to stay it otherwise like everything else you're too far behind this is a very reasonable cost to leave that line this I, I, that, that's the hardest part i've come to try to understand how they yeah. were able to provide it at that price they made it uh i'll use christian's words who is who did this who is is he the vp of mri yeah. i think i thought so um so he it's said microsoft based too i think right it's microsoft based yeah wouldn't it be Oh, I understand. Yeah. yeah, it's not it's not Apple product. Well, no. it's probably accessible through all of it. Right. It's their own software. Yeah. Um, but what he said is we wanted to create a functional platform with none of the fancy bells and whistles that make it expensive. They wanted to make it affordable for small towns, and the majority of their clients are small towns. So I have the functionality. The functionality is I could endlessly make you reports at the click of some buttons. <laughs> Um, it's very accessible. Like I said, we were sitting there going, you can do that, and that's not even that exciting. <laughs> so I'll bring up a little story uh, to, to justify what you're talking about. This one is working in safety. We did a, a three-year program to the software that the Department of Motor Vehicles was using for different programs. So the girls who worked in the office had four one was for licensing, one was for registrations and titles. So we created a new product called Vision. And it went out to bid, and a company in India, all places, wanted to bid. They 
because Microsoft recommended the most modern features they were the best. It was a three year project. They had to go back to the beginning of time and create every single product that's ever been in any system and put it into one product. It took three years to do it, but when we went, when we went, when we went live with it, it operated flawlessly. Massachusetts, on the other hand, had done a similar project with a different company. They went live and they crashed. Yeah, that's what so you got to do it right. Yeah. you got to do it right. It's and I'm telling the story because of that. You know? yeah. uh, well, that's what I'm saying. I just the, the $25,000 fee, that's nothing. What are they, exactly. what are they doing to make that affordable? And that's it. They, it's very plain when you look at it, but it's very functional. Like currently BMSI, we have to have two different uh, two different programs and you can't be in both of them at the same time. One processes accounts payable, one processes other other accounting. And sometimes there's things where I have to go, Louie, you need to go out because I need to be the only one in there. So this allows every user to be able to have access to what they're supposed to have access to. Um, trails, whoever does what and you can have, I said, how many screens can you have open? And they said, you can have a ton of screens open, you can have the same screen open. <laughs> like, you can just keep going, so. But they also have a, a an iron, an iron security system. Yeah. And yeah, that's important. You can't get hacked. Well, and we have our own through our IT people, yeah. so there's kind of like, Double, double the amount, <laughs> if you will. It does happen. It happens in not just towns and cities. It happens in major corporations in the federal government. It happens in people. So that's that's the crisis. That, that, that's the most important part. Okay. So what are you looking for? I'm going to just. Fred, did they just need to make a motion to approve it, and I can negotiate? Do yep. I need to negotiate yep. and come back? Yep. Do you Negotiate, come back. Okay. Uh, is everybody comfortable with the discussion so far? Yeah. Uh, I'll be happy to make a motion to approve the, uh, the office to negotiate and to come up with a warrant on to pay. Well, no. you, you gotta, you got to negotiate some prices, right? Right, but we're not. It's going to be just budget. budget. Oh, it's got to be a budget item. And this has to be done before the night, doesn't it? No, no, so we would use existing funds. That's why we would do it over the course of a few years. Okay. It's because we've already done the budget, so we would find somewhere in there to squeeze in what we can for this year, and then appropriate out year over year for the remainder. So we need a motion to approve the purchase yep. and negotiation. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Right, you, do, uh, you do have one thing I think people need to know about, and that is that uh, January 9th is the last day a petition warrant article can be submitted. Right. So that's, that's important. 